Hey, real quick here, I just want to point out that we are not sponsored or affiliated with Old School Model Works in any way, shape, or form. This is just a simple, unbiased post-build review of the Sky Ranger 40, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and maybe even that little bell so you get a notification whenever we post new videos. Thanks. Hi, I'm Marty from MBMRC. Today I'm reviewing an Old School Model uh, Sky Ranger 40, and... Uh, I want to talk a little bit about old school models. When I first looked at uh, these kits online, I thought that they were a little bit pricey. And the, my two boys, Brian and Matthew, both had bought one on a Sunday, uh, Sunday uh, hangar flying session we had in here. They both had decided it was a good idea to try an old school model. And I have to tell you, when I seen the kits, and we opened them up and I seen the, the, the plans, the detailed plans, and you look at the laser cutting, you say to yourself, I don't know how he can sell them that cheap. Uh, the laser cutting, he must have a really good laser burner because it's just, the lines are so fine and everything fits so nice. He does a, just a remarkable job. And when you look at price, you have to remember the economics of it all. The guy has to pay for a laser burner. He has to pay for his engineering, his time, the wood, the things that go into it. And we need to support these guys. This is a guy out of the USA who's trying to make it. And, and I think he's got a really, really super good product. I'm, I'm very impressed. That's why I bought the Sky Ranger from him. And to tell you the kind of service that the guy has, I had ordered the Sky Ranger. He immediately sent me an email back and said he did not have the aileron stock uh, for the kit, that it was on back order from the manufacturer that he gets it from. And wanted to know if, you know, if I wanted it shipped without it. And for me, it's no problem. I can make aileron stock of any shape, size, tin or hue. So I did, I, I told him to go ahead with the kit, but his email was, instantaneous. I told him, go ahead and ship it. He knocked $5 off the price of the kit. I actually feel bad about that because the kit, it, 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 it's worth every penny that, that, that you pay for it. Uh, both Matthew and myself started working on this project. It would have been, today is Saturday. We started on this Wednesday night. Uh, he does the fuselage and tail feathers while I do the wing. I built the left panel Wednesday evening, the right panel Thursday evening, I joined the two together on Friday, made the aileron stock and installed it. This is all after work, maybe talking three hours a night at best, both of us working on it. And I built the wing or finished the wing Saturday morning, installing the aileron servos and so forth and putting the finishing the, the servo base. There's a few things I've done uh, different than what he did. Uh, one, uh, he mentions nothing about fiberglassing the center section of the wing. I'm old school. His The way he does his center section, you could probably drive a truck over it. There is no reason really to fiberglass the center section other than I'm just an old timer that said, you know what, I'm going to glass the center section. So I did. The other thing I did is I added paper tubes inside, inside the wing. He's got really nice holes in the rib base. You can see the paper tubes there for the aileron leads to go through. It just, to me, I don't want to be on a fishing expedition. And whenever you have servo leads and you're trying to dangle them through ribs, it's a fishing expedition. Much easier in a paper tube. So, you know, it was just a piece of notebook paper, roll it up, stick it in the hole. Uh, Outside of that, I mean, I really changed nothing. I can give some good hints of this plane. Anybody can build this plane. If this would be the first plane you ever built, it is extremely easy to build. And a couple things uh, th that would be easy to do. He runs these cap strips over top of the rib all the way to the leading edge. I've seen some pictures of some guys that have built them, and you can tell that they had cracked that cap strip. Easy thing to do, spray it with Windex. Let it soak a couple seconds, lay it in place, glue it down, done. Uh, that's, that's just a little tip if you're building this plane. Uh, another couple things that Matthew had noted on the fuselage 
it was in the last step that he had mentioned putting these stiffeners in because this is a laser cut outside and he did the webbing and everything and it's a beautiful job but he mentions in the end that it's optional to put these quarter inch stringers across each one of those webs however it's a little bit difficult once the plane is assembled to put them in it's not impossible but it's difficult so if you opt to do that i would say to put these in first and uh, before you join the sides together. Uh, the next thing that Matthew had noted is there was no thrust lines on the plans and there was nothing marked on the, on the firewall. It would be nice uh, if he could maybe, and, and maybe he has a reason that he doesn't, but it would be nice if he could laser etch the thrust lines for the firewall. We did figure it out and uh, we, we, we got that done. This plane is not all glued together. The, the tail feathers still need to be rounded on the edges, but outside of that, it's pretty much ready to cover. It's gonna be powered with an OS AX46 II. I have it in a uh, Dave Brown, uh, it's a tab mount type uh, isolation mount. Uh, it's rubber mount. Uh, I'm looking for some real smooth performance. I've never used one and we have between Matthew and myself and my, and my boys, we have over 140 planes right now. And uh, yeah, there's uh, very easy to, to assemble. He also mentions using a six ounce fuel tank in this. I was able to fit an eight ounce in it. <laughs> I did have to, or Matthew had to trim the center, the center support a bit to make it fit, but we used a Sullivan round tank and it, it basically fit in there, no problem. It's all packed in foam. And the another thing that we did is we found, he has up here for the cockpit. He has, uh, shows the guy kind of sitting there up top of the servos. We actually made a floor for this. And, there, and the main reason for the floor was it does also strengthen this fuselage in this area. He does not show any floor in there, nor did he supply the materials that do it. But we have them. And I would suggest if you are building this, definitely to put that floor across it. It definitely strengthens that up a bit and uh, gives the little guy a place to sit. But I enjoy building this kit and uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm ready to build something else that he's got. And I know that between one of us, one of us are gonna have the Comet here shortly. One of us is probably gonna have the Javelin uh, it's going to happen. And yeah, Matthew and I both enjoy building this kit immensely. I mean, for the short period of time, if you're looking for a quick kit to build, this is it. And the other thing, he has this nice little hatch. Like if you do have a fuel tank or you're running around electric, this hatch comes out, get access to the tank. And the next time you see it, we're going to cover it. If it flies as good as it looks, which I see no reason for it not to. Uh, I think it's gonna be something else. I did see some videos where guys say that uh, the plane doesn't knife edge well. And when I look at the flipper that's on the back of this, it's a pretty good sized flipper. I'm gonna find out, I don't know, but I think it's lack of power that they might be suffering from. I, I, I'm gonna find out because that OSA X46 will have plenty of power for this plane. So we'll see what it does in the air. Uh, we'll have some videos of it once it's covered. Thank you for your time and uh, like and subscribe. Thanks.